Hello students. In today's video, we are going to discuss the experiment to study the variation of magnetic field along the x-axis of a circular current carrying coil and then to estimate the radius of the coil. Please subscribe to the channel in order to avail other benefits of free PDF and solution to any problem you come across while hearing the video lectures. Thank you. Okay, now what is the aim of our experiment here? The aim of our experiment is to find the radius of this coil with the help of concept of variation of magnetic field along the x-axis of this circular current carrying coil. So the apparatus requirement is that we need Stewart and Gee type tangent galvanometer, a storage battery, a commutator key, which is a four plug key, and it is used to reverse the direction of electric current in any circuit, ammeter, which will give the reading of current, rheostat, which will vary the current in the circuit, one way plug key to open and close my circuit and connecting wires. Now, the very first thing we will do is that we will connect the circuit in magnetic meridian. What is magnetic meridian? Magnetic meridian is an equivalent imaginary line connecting the magnetic south and north poles and it can be taken as the horizontal component of magnetic force lines along the surface of the earth. So a compass needle will be parallel to the magnetic meridian and from tangent law that means our tangent galvanometer is based on tangent law the Force is proportional to tan theta or F is equal to H tan theta where H is the constant of the magnetic field at the place of the experiment. Now, the very first question that comes, this is our tangent galvanometer. Here, a magnetic needle or a magnet is freely suspended in two mutually perpendicular uniform magnetic fields. It will come to rest in the direction of the resultant of two fields. Next, the very uh, famous question which we have for this experiment is that why do we need to set this tangent galvanometer in magnetic meridian? See, the tangent galvanometer, that is tan, works on the principle of tangent law of magnetism. And it is used to measure the strength between two magnetic fields which are present perpendicular to each other. Now, for this tangent law to be valid, uh, both fields should be perpendicular to each other. So when tangent galvanometer is set in magnetic meridian, then field due to current carrying coil is perpendicular to the horizontal component of Earth's field. That is why we set tangent galvanometer in magnetic meridian. This is the first step of this experiment. Then we make the circuit. This is our circuit diagram. Let us begin with the four-way commutator key terminals. Now, opposites of this commutator key terminals are connected to n number of coils with which we are doing the experiment, which is usually 50. So here commutator key two wires are going here for n equal to 50 and the other whole loop because ammeter is always connected in series. So we begin with the other commutator key part and we connect the one-way key. Here is the one-way key. Then the ammeter, this is the ammeter and from ammeter we are connecting the rheostat and rheostat has been connected to the negative terminal of battery and positive terminal of battery has been connected to the opposite end of the commutator key. 
the red knob shows the positive terminal of battery and the black knob shows the negative terminal of the battery. Rheostat connections are done which are varying current in the circuit. This coil has been set in magnetic meridian and parallax has been removed and now we switch on the circuit. Once we switch on, here is the complete uh, view of how our circuit looks like, which we can easily memorize. Next, now we switch on the circuit here in this experiment. And what have we to do? We have to take the variation of magnetic field along the x-axis of this circular coil. So we will set the coil first at x equal to 0, then keep shifting it by 1, 1 centimeter and with the help of commutator key, we will note the deflection on the left side of the coil and deflection on the right side of the coil. Take a mean of all the four values of deflection which we have read with the commutator key, find its tan and plot a graph between x on the x-axis and these two values of tan which we have got on either side of the graph. This is the aim of our experiment. So what we do once we switch on the circuit, we begin the experiment. Now, First, circumference of this coil, the standard value has been mentioned on the coil itself, 68.5 centimeter. And the formula for circumference is 2 pi r is equal to circumference. So it is equal to 68.5. So radius becomes equal to 68.5 divided by 2 into pi that is 3.14 so this comes out as 10.9 centimeter this is the standard value of this circular current carrying coil so one standard value has been given to us and the other way around we will find the radius of the circular current carrying coil by varying the magnetic field along the x-axis and plotting a graph between distance and the tangent. So first, we will move left side of the coil. With the help of this commutator key, we are going to reverse the direction of current. So first, we take the coil at the center x equal to 0 and see how much deflection has come. When x is equal to 0 and our coil is set in magnetic meridian, then theta 1 is coming as 75 degree and theta 2 is coming as 72 degree. This way, x equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, we will keep taking 1, 1 centimeter. We will keep shifting this compass box and keep reading the thetas. And then x equal to 2 centimeter, we have shifted the compass box. And let us see what angles we are getting. When we have done x equal to 2 centimeter, we get theta 1 is 72 degree, theta 2 is 70 degree. It doesn't make any difference whether you are reading this as theta 2 and this as theta 1 or vice versa because ultimately you are going to find out the mean of all these angles which you have read with the help of commutator key. Now, we will shift this compass box a bit more on the left-hand side. Say we take it to the position x equal to 4 centimeter. So, at x equal to 4 centimeter, what do we get? We get theta 1 equal to or theta uh, 2 equal to 67 centimeter. Theta 1 also equal to 67, uh, sorry, 67 degree. Sorry. Next, we put... Uh, uh, take it to x equal to 6 centimeter and then again we read theta 1, theta 2 this way. See, 59 degree, 60 degree. Slowly, slowly we keep taking the coil and 10 centimeter, 12 centimeter, 11 centimeter this way. All readings on left hand side, once they finish, 
we move our scale to the reverse side. We now start moving the compass box on the opposite side. So for x equal to 0 centimeter, we get 72 degree, 75 degree. Now this is theta 3, theta 4 for our observation table. Then again, x equal to 1 or 2, we move it a more bit and then we get uh, uh, theta 3, theta 4. Now this is on the opposite side. So see theta 3, 67 degree, theta 4, 65 degree. This way, we again proceed till x equal to 12 centimeter. We can move further ahead also with the x readings, but whatever our table tells, according to that, we will keep taking the readings. And this is theta 3, theta 4. Now we will write down these readings in the observation table. In the given observation table, we are going to write these readings and let us have a closer look at readings which we have observed. What the readings are showing us. See, you can see for X varying and we have read the values. This is our observation table. Have a look. When the compass box was at the center, x equal to 0, maximum deflection was observed. See, the readings are in 70s. Then as we kept moving away from the coil, x equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this way, the angles started declining. See, for some range, they are in 70s. Then they declined to 60s, then they declined to 50s, 40s and 30s. So you can note that the angles on either side of the center are declining, which means that the intensity of magnetic field strength decreases. And that is also a well-known fact. Now the challenge is to plot a graph between x equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and tan theta on left hand side with these values and tan theta on the other side. So how to plot the graph in this experiment, which is most important part of this experiment. We need to choose a proper scale. So x-axis, we can choose one unit equal to one centimeter with these readings. That will be no problem. On the y-axis, it is a challenge of how I choose my scale. So what I will do is I will pick up the maximum value that is 3.66 and the minimum value 0 0.56. I will subtract the maximum value, minimum value from the maximum value and divide it by whatever number of units I want to spread my graph. Suppose here it is still 12. So let us divide this difference by 12. This difference dividing by 12, approximately I get 0.25. So my y-axis scale, I take one unit as 0.25 degree. This is one of the most challenging part of this practical of how to choose the scale. So I repeat once again how to plot the graph. When you are going to plot a graph, then check out axis on which you have to plot the quantity, then choose the scale for that, take up the lowest and the highest values and divide it accordingly to how much you want to spread the graph. So on the x-axis, one unit is one centimeter. On y-axis, one unit is 0.25 degree. We have subtracted maximum value from minimum value here. So, and then we have decided to divide it in the scale of 12 units. So, we divided and so one unit on y-axis is approximately 0.25 degree. Again, from the graph also, you can notice that at x equal to 0, 
tan values are coming maximum and then they are declining on either side. Then we have uh, with a free hand curve here, see x axis and this is my y axis. I have chosen the scale accordingly and now from the graph, I will put from the table, I will put these points and with the very free hand, not purposely trying to join the points, I will plot a curve and then I will check out the point of inflection that is where the curvature of the graph is changing. Those are known as points of inflection. And on those points, I will draw a straight line or a tangent. And accordingly, where this tangent cuts the graph, I will drop perpendiculars on the x-axis. And then I will measure C points of inflection and I am going to measure this distance on the C. I drew the points of inflection, the point where they have cut the graph from there. I have dropped perpendiculars on the x-axis and then I will simply add up this distance and this distance and I will get my radius of circular coil experimentally. See, this is 4.8 centimeter plus 5.5 centimeter. So the radius of the coil is 4.8 plus 5.5 equal to 10.3. And what did we get in the beginning when we started the experiment? That was 10.8 something. That is standard value. This is the observed value. The biggest precaution of this experiment is that the connections should be tight. And before beginning the experiment, it should be strictly set in magnetic meridian. Thank you.